Ana. Welcome to our world, driven by electrical power. It's hard to find any part of our lives which does not benefit from electrical technology. It is everywhere. It's easy to take it for granted, but this electrical world is constantly in motion. It is the collective work of millions. Engineering and understanding the materials used in our electrical world is the keystone to making it all run. Advancements in materials directly leads to advancements in technology. Smaller, faster, more durable, flexible, more precise. All of these are the results of improvements in materials and design. So what are the materials that make it all work? And how do we get these materials from nature? Iron. Since ancient times, it has been used as a compass to point toward magnetic north. And since then, inventors and engineers have found new roles for this material. The thing to know about iron is it's a metal. So iron is used in industrial magnets and kind of the common magnets that you see. It's used in electronics, it's used in appliances, it's used in making cars, it's used in hair accessories, it's used everywhere. When you look at a power plant, most of that stuff in, in generators is made out of steel. It's the second largest commodity in the world next to oil. So. Why is iron so special? And where does it come from? So the Masabi Iron Range uh, historically produced some of the most pure iron ore available. These rocks were laid down as sedimentary layers of iron oxide bearing rocks. The combination of dissolved iron in the water and the availability of oxygen provided by new life forms in the form of algae made for the creation of iron oxides. And then because they are heavy, small little granules, they settle out through the water column. This happened at 1.8 billion year time period. Good magnetic taconite with fine disseminated magnetite throughout in this piece. Another example here with some uh, you see the difference in color between pale and dark. The dark is magnetite bearing, the pale is not. Iron occurs in many forms, but hematite and magnetite are the most abundant for iron mining. So we set blasts and we basically extract it out of the ground through shovels and blasting media. And then from there it goes to a crusher. At, it's our primary crusher at the mine. Uh, it goes through a secondary crusher uh, made to a finer rock. And from the crusher it goes to our concentrator. And it is uh, pulverized by the rod mill. It then goes down to the magnetic separators. So here you see we've got a magnetic separator that's already out and out of service. It's not in line right now, but it's a little easier to explain how it works this way. So you can kind of see down here on the bottom, uh, when we pull this out, we've still got material, <coughs> magnetic material that's stuck to the magnet. So you can kind of see the magnet starts about here. How this machine works is that the magnet is attached to the shaft. Then the drive unit rotates the outer shell around the fixed magnet. The magnet picks up the iron units, carries them up to the discharge lip, dumps them over to the discharge lip. Everything that is not iron based falls out the bottom of the tub and goes to the tailing spot. For every four tons of material that comes out, one ton stays in the process, three tons get put out into the tailing space. The entire electrical industry started with magnetic separators. In 1831, Joseph Henry built a powerful electromagnet and used it in a commercial mining operation. Before Henry's invention, Electricity was only a curiosity and an area of scientific experimentation. 
These first electromagnets were made from iron cores wrapped in copper wire and were insulated by pieces of his wife's wedding dress. Henry built a magnetic device used to separate high quality magnetite from impurity and thus began the birth of the electrical industry. We take the iron content, it flows through pipes over to the filtering process. The filters uh, extract the water. And after it goes from the filters, it is transferred to balling where there's these huge balling drums that rotate around and around and around until it makes these, we call them green balls. The drying zone um, will burn off any excess water that's in the green ball. As it gets past the drying zone, it all ends up right up in here in the preheat. And the preheat then kicks up big time in temperature, so we go from roughly 600 degrees up to about 2,000 degrees. Magnetite is then turned to hematite by a redox reaction, which is an oxidation reduction reaction. There's a, about a retention time of about 15 to 20 minutes in the kiln, and this part of the process is what takes to harden our pellet. So the pelletization process involves making small pellets using bentonite. Iron is pelletized mainly for mobility. So we're able to put it into rail cars and able to move it quite efficiently. The overall goal of iron processing is to make a quality pellet that meets our customer specs. That when the pellets get to the blast furnaces, they need to have a certain strength and a certain chemical makeup so it's the most efficient process possible. After processing,